Hi, this is Howard Clark here from the Catamaran Company in Grenada. This morning we're going to have a walk around a 63 foot catamaran called Tobago. It's a great boat, she's right behind me, let's go and have a look. Okay, so let's start off by having a little look at the outside and uh, Tobago is a really nice looking boat. She's got sleek hulls, she's got dagger boards, she's got low profile keels, uh, so she really is um, going to be quite nice through the water. This is actually a Ron Given design, so if you're familiar with uh, the look of this boat then uh, he's quite a, a renowned catamaran designer and he built several boats that look uh, very similar to this. This I believe was the largest of the boats that were, were commissioned and, uh, and I found one uh, as recently as 2017 built in a very similar style to this. The rear arch was a very distinctive feature that uh, seems to have been on all the sailboats that he did. So if you see another one, it's probably one of the sister vessels to Tobago. This is a, a cedar plank construction. So it's a, it's a wooden frame with fiberglass over the top, uh, but it's extremely well done. So I'm going to show you uh, a little bit later inside one of the bilges what it looks like, um, but it's, uh, it's got some really nice features. It's very well thought out. The layout is, uh, is really nice, and this is gonna make a, an excellent vessel for somebody. So you have two main winches on the mast here for the mainsail as you pan across a really good sized windlass. The hatches on the uh, on the bows there are actually a crew compartments. So there's a crew sleeping compartment and on the port side you have a, a crew bathroom area. Up on the hard top here, We've got six uh, fairly recent solar panels and looking underneath that hard top you can really see the quality of construction the, the finished work is uh, is very nice so there's a full set of cushions for the cockpit um, that make it look really nice in here they're very comfortable there's a lovely cockpit table it looks like it's hardwood, it's two inches thick, it's quite, uh, it's quite a construction here we have. Uh, so very sturdy, folding leaves so it all packs away so you've got easy access into the salon. So as we step through into the salon, if we look over to the port side, you're going to see the uh, navigation table area the chart plotters and uh, the communications equipment and then there's the 12 volt breaker panel for all this equipment. So as we pan round the salon there's some really nice seating, plenty of space here for entertaining or relaxing have enough space for some freestanding chairs and a table so it's a, it's a really nice area plenty of room the width of the boat is really evident once you get inside and you just see how much available space you have for living nice flat screen TV and now we're going to head over towards the galley this is a galley down boat so the galley is on the starboard side So as we pause just before we head down into the galley, we've got a full size fridge freezer. So plenty of refrigeration available here. It's nice and convenient. So if you want to go down and get cold drinks to take back up to the cockpit, then uh, it's, it's really accessible. Looking down the galley, plenty of countertop space here, uh, which is always welcome in the galley. Uh, stainless steel one and a half bowl sink on the right, on the left, you've got a four burner gas hob. You've actually got a little bit of space if you wanted to increase that. If you wanted some extra burner space, you could actually fit that in as well. We've got a standard sized oven here. 
and then underneath it we've got a full sized dishwasher. So heading aft from the galley we are going to walk into one of the aft staterooms um, just up on the right there was a queen sized uh, stateroom and then just behind that is the wet head uh, as we just pan around here there's a there's a small door at the bottom this is the front access to the engine so you have top access and front access via these rear cabins so heading back through the galley uh, we're going to come to one of the forward staterooms. Uh, this could either be um, a very big double as it is, uh, or it can be separated into two singles. Just on the right we've got a, a desk vanity area. The AC control is there just on the side. Uh, some hanging space and then heading through into this rear bathroom area. Separate shower just at the back there. Everything's uh, nicely laid out. Very organised, plenty of space, it's, uh, it's really well done. Heading across the salon to the port side, get another look at the navigation desk and good size, plenty of room for charts and somewhere to work which is really useful. So heading down into uh, the port side hull, uh, just behind the stairs there you saw the emergency hatch really easy to find, very central. So down in the port side companionway, we're going to find uh, more circuit boards. This is uh, more of the mains powered circuit boards, so the, uh, the 220 volt systems. Uh, the starts for the generators, there's a Northern Lights and a Fisher Panda generator starting remote unit here. There's a washing machine with another refrigerator. This cupboard here is actually quite shallow. Uh, the uh, dagger boards come down inside that cupboard, so it's, uh, it's only a few inches deep. The forward cabin, again, on the port side, the, uh, the cabin areas are a mirror of each other, so this is exactly the same as we saw on the starboard side with the same bathroom and shower setup. So as we head towards the aft cabin, the aft two cabins are actually slightly different. This one on the port side, uh, the bathroom area is just in front. So you could use this as, uh, as your day head so anybody would just be able to, uh, to come down to this rather than having to pass all the way through somebody's cabin. And the aft cabin again is a really nice size. Nice big bed. And in these aft cabins we find a little locker that you can open up and this gives nice easy access to the front of the engine. Now there are engine hatches up on the outside of the boat 
on the, uh, the port and starboard, starboard side. I'll show you those in a while, but this just allows easy access to the belts and some of the other things. And uh, obviously, you can now you can get to the engines from inside the boat if the uh, if the weather conditions are bad. Now, as we have a look inside one of the bilges uh, it's nice and clean in here but I slowed the footage down because I just wanted you to have a good look at this cedar plank construction so through the the fiberglass there you can actually see the cedar planks that the core of the boat is made out of now cedar is a great material to work with it's uh, it's quite light but it's also very strong and it adds a huge amount of buoyancy so um, cedar plank boats um, are quite often uh, low number low production boats and uh, the wood is uh, is easier to work with sometimes when you're building um, a one-off and then you just cover it in a skin of fiberglass So looking forward in the next bilge compartment, um, some of the plumbing in here, um, quite a few of the things are double hose clamped which is nice but there's a little bit of corrosion in here so there's some cleanup needed but uh, the general bilge area, uh, the fiberglass work looks uh, looks really nice um, but there's some, there's some minor work to do in some of these areas. So having a little look in the port side, engine mechanical compartment, as you can see there's plenty of space in here to be climbing down inside, there's additional pumps down in here and there's also some space just aft of where the engine is sitting, there's another mechanical space there. The engine hours on the Port and Starboard Yanmar engines are right around 4,000 hours. So the rear cross beam holds several of the winches and, uh, and spinning them up they appear to be quite free. This next one actually just stuck for a uh, a first second and uh, but then it uh, it started moving but uh, some of these winches haven't been turned in probably 18 months um, so they probably want some greasing but everything everything feels okay heading back across to the starboard side have a little look in this engine compartment right there we can see there's a sound enclosure for the Fisher Panda generator and the starboard side engine So as we look across the rear beam, you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven winches across this beam. So there's certainly no shortage of winches back here. These two over on the port side are both electrically operated. And bearing in mind that the winches to uh, raise the mainsail um, are actually on the on the base of the mast. So these will control the jib lines and the traveler also if you had a spinnaker out and to raise and lower your tender The rear arch on this boat looks great. It supports the dinghy, but also is supporting some of the electronics. So um, you have a, a satellite dish under the dome, which is going to be for communications, and there's your radar unit. 
in the middle. This is a good sized dinghy, 13 or 14 feet with an 85 horsepower Yamaha engine. The cockpit has two nice large storage lockers. Again, really nicely made, nicely finished lockers here. So let's have a little look underneath the waterline. And Tobago has some low profile fixed keels underneath here, but she also, there you see the dagger board. So uh, she's gonna benefit from uh, some good upwind performance. So uh, she's gonna uh, move, move along quite nicely. Um, the, uh, the holes uh, for her length and the sail size are actually uh, very sleek, so uh, she's not going to be a slouch through the water by any means. So she does need a repaint, a paint. she needs some sanding, uh, the zincs need replacing, but the folding props turn nice and smoothly. And uh, so I haven't really seen anything that looks like um, it's going to be a concern underneath here. It all just uh, looks like it needs some servicing. Inside between the holes. Again, the uh, the finish is looking very good. I haven't seen anything that looks like it's going to need any major amount of work. Obviously, repainting again, but everything looks really nice under here. So uh, yeah, she's uh, she's looking really good. So the fixed low profile keels on this boat mean that she has a permanent draft of about three foot six. Uh, so yeah, it's very low um, amount of draft for a 63 foot boat um, but the keels do still give good protection to the sail drives and the rudders so uh, so you know you, you benefit from the uh, all the plus points of having dagger boards but uh, but also the benefits of having that protection from those fixed keels So I just wanted to cover some of the things that I've seen that are going to need attention. The lines running rigging is, uh, is all past its best. The lines are pretty hard and going to be uncomfortable to work with. Some of them are uh, fraying, so, uh, so I think all of them uh, will need replacing. The port and starboard window in the salon both look like they've been leaking. There's plenty of extra sealant around here so uh, really to do this nice and neat I think removing them and rebedding them is probably the way to go. There's a broken hatch here, uh, the glass in this one is broken it's taped up just to keep the water out but that will need attention. So the teak on the steps here is in need of some work. It has quite a few loose planks, and so it might be that uh, that, that can just be uh, redone and, uh, and some of the same teak used, it might need some of it to be replaced or you could, uh, you could look at doing something else here, but the teak adds a nice finish. So I always like to see teak on the back of the boats. There's a jammer lever here that is broken, so that's going to need replacing. The dinghy itself has seen better days, um, so it's, uh, it looks like it has some leaks, um, but it might be repairable, it might be able to go a little bit longer. The engine looks really good, it's an 85 horsepower Yamaha Enduro engine that doesn't look very old, um, but the dinghy itself uh, will certainly need a little bit of uh, service and repair work. But we do have a brand new in the bag mainsail so this has never been opened it was received and uh, has been sitting in the boat waiting for its next adventure okay so that concludes our walk around video of the 63 foot catamaran tobago if you're interested in more information about this boat then please give me a call send me an email you'll find my details at the end of the video if this is not quite the boat for you uh, but you'd like me to help you find something else then uh, then again just send me a, some information let me know a little bit about what you're looking for and i'll be happy to help you find your next boat catamarans.com is a great resource for new and pre-owned vessels so go and have a look on 
on there and like and subscribe this channel then you'll not miss any of the new content all right so this is howard clark here in grenada have a great day everybody